here is how you figure out quartiles. So here is our data and okay so here's our data and um, to find the mean we're going to add all of these together and then we're going to divide by the number of numbers. So we have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. That would give you your mean. So we have 8 plus 8 plus 18 plus 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, 60, 70, 80, 81, 82, 83, 84, 85, 86. So we have 120 divided by 12 is 10. That is our mean. Our mode, everything's already in order. So not our mode, our uh, median. So we're just going to cross out until we get to the middle number. Our mode, ah, I keep saying mode. Our median is 10. <clears throat> our mode is the most frequently occurring number. Happens to be 10. Okay. We have things called quartiles. <clears throat> there are three quartiles. <clears throat> quartile two is the median. So whatever you got for the median, you're gonna write for Q2. Q2 and the median are the Wait, same. No, we do know this stuff. Okay. Okay, so the first first uh, quartile one is would be eight and quartile three would be 12, right? So here's how you figure it out. You circle, Q2, that is our median, and, oh, wait. and okay. then you now take this set of data, this whole thing is how we're going to find Q1. So this whole thing is not Q1, it's how we figure it out, and this whole thing is how we figure out Q3. So I'm just going to label it like that, it seem, it's very helpful for me to do it that way. Now I'm going to cross out the first one and the last one, the second one and the second to last one, and I'm going to circle my median of my Q1. Huh? So it's median of Q1, the whole Q1 is what Q1 is. So to figure it out, you take the median of the whole first quartile and you do cross out, cross out, cross out, cross out. The last one standing is your Q1. Then you do the same thing to Q2. This one, we have two standing, but they're both the same number. So your Q3 is 11. Okay. All right. Another thing they might ask you is range. Range is the greatest number minus the smallest number. So our range is 4. And then, <clears throat> here's something. Did you learn MAD? Maybe. Okay. <laughs> so, here is how you figure it out. You take your numbers and you write them out going this way. And you make sure you got them all correct. 9, 9, 10, 10, 10, 10, 11, 11, 12, 12. Okay. Now we take our Q2 and we subtract that from all of the numbers. All right. Now we figure out what these are. What is 8 minus negative 10? Negative 2. Two. Negative 2, negative 1, negative 1, 0, 0, 0, 0, 1, 1, 2, and 2. Now you add all of those up. So negative 2 plus negative 2 is negative 4, negative 5, negative 6, 0, 0, 0, 0. So we're at negative 6 right here. Then we add 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. So our MAD is 12 over 12, which is 1. So um, 
did you learn that or do you not remember learning it? I don't remember learning okay. that. Okay, so you might not have to. So that'll be good. And then to do your data. Wait, why are there so many numbers though? Like, like where do you get them all from? Like a chart? Right here. Oh. It's everything that was on our, you got to do it this way so that you can oh, add everything okay. together. And then to do can your you plot whisker, I don't know if you learned this. So you write all of your data down. I've done, I've done the box plot, yeah. Okay. And then you mark your Q2, which is this. Yeah. And you do this. You label mm -hmm. it Q2. And then Q1 is 9. So you're going to make a dot here. And you're going to make that your whisker. And then it doesn't go anywhere. So your data would just be this and then how far does your data go for Q3 it goes to 11 so because this is such a small data point that's the problem then you put this thing around here and you have your plot and your whisker okay well, this is uh, Q1 just to, just to clarify uh, Q one and Q3 are the sides of the boxes, right? Yeah, this is this. So Q1 is the middle of the first set of data. So your data, here's your median. It is the left side of your data. And then your Q3 consists of all the numbers in your right side, but you have to find the middle or the median of your right side or your Q3 data set to find what your Q3 okay. is. Um, the range is both of the ends of the thing. Right? Yeah, your greatest number minus your smallest number. This is your range. So the Where range. Where does the median and mode fit in? Not, nowhere? This is the median. No, no, not the median. I mean the mean. The I mean? Is that. The, the mean and the mode are not put into that chart, right? That's into all. this chart, yep. no. Okay. No. Okay, yeah, I have that down. Okay, awesome. Going on to our next problem, number seven. I don't know if that's the next problem, but it's my next page. So. Wait, um, I, I, I didn't write that. Actually, wait. Um, yeah, I did not write that. I recorded it. Well, so um, my biggest oh, okay. problem is is that we have 13 minutes, and I want to make sure we get to at least most of this because you haven't done it, right? Okay, yeah. number seven for each graph, write the name of the distribution shape, symmetric, uniform, skewed, bell-shaped, bimodal, and explain what about the shape tells you that you are correct. So you know what a bell-shaped curve is, right? He, no. It looks like a bell. Look, bell. Woo, uh -huh. that's it. <laughs> okay. That's easy. Okay. Um, skewed means that it's skewed off to one side. Hmm. That's easy, right? I know what uniform one is. Which one is uniform? It's like the, it's D. And then what is bimodal? The ones that go up and down. So the bimodal means that <clears throat> there's two sides of something. So which one appears to be two sides of something? Okay. So <clears throat> I'm losing my voice. That's not good. Um, so bimodal means that you have data, and then there's not that much data, and then there's a whole bunch of data. So it could look like this. There's there's like a left side that has data. There's nothing in the middle, and then or little in the middle, and then yeah. there's a whole nother set by modal two sides. Okay. See this? These are all yeah. by modals. Okay. My friend Sheila goes by. It says she reminds it like the way she remembers it is 
Bisexual. Yeah, that's bi means both, right? So both sides. Yeah. Symmetric means that everything is symmetrically. Uh, values appear at regularly regular frequencies, and often the mean, mode, and median often occur at the same point. So symmetrical is a bell-shaped curve. That's what a bell-shaped curve is. So. Mm -hmm. Bell shape, symmetrical. Symmetrical, bell shape. Okay. So that makes sense. That whole page is done. And then here, I already went over this with you. So you will be able to do it. It is the plot whisker thing. Yeah. Okay. Um, so I just want to make sure we can get to... Oh. Oh, I, think, um, I think you sent this twice. I probably, yeah. Okay. So does this make sense? Skewed. It's yeah. skewed off to one side. Yeah. I have it memorized now. Okay. All right. Okay. Two teams, um, yeah, that one. Okay, go ahead. So, read oh. it to me. Uh, two teams at two different schools, um, each use their weight rooms after school, and then school one has that one. Yeah, okay. Coach Wong says that his team spends more time working out because his team has a maximum of 16, and both schools have a minimum of three. And then Coach Chu says that his team spends more time working out because, um, except for the minimum, maximum, everything else about Team 2 is higher than Team 1. Explain with which coach is correct. Try to use more than one statistic from the book plot, mean, median, and mode, Minimum, maximum, quartile, one quartile, three range, interquartile range, etc. Okay. Then, so yeah. we have a mode, uh, sorry, a median of eight, because mm -hmm. we know this is the Q2. This mo median is nine. And we know that the median is not the best predictor, it just tells you when you're crossing out data which one is. In the middle. All right, so school one has lower by kind of a lot. So their range is four, and their other side of their range is 10. This coach has a six and a 12. So I'm thinking that the minimum is above their minimum up here. So this tells me that nobody works out four hours, whereas we know at least one person does. And we know at least one person works out for 12 hours, whereas nobody works out that much here, right? This yeah. median is eight. This median is nine. So when you're crossing out numbers on this one, the middle of your data is eight, the maximum is 10. This seems to be probably something that looks like this. Something like that, right? And then this one, we know it starts at 6, and there's nobody who does 4, and then we have a 12. Maybe it's only one person, but that's a lot in this little set of data. Yeah. Okay, and now we know our, our median number is 9, so we don't know how the data is spread, but we just know that if you cross it out, uh, say there's a whole bunch of 9s, we'll make it a little even. So we know okay, there's our median of 8 we don't know if this is the data because they didn't tell us, but I'm just giving you an example. 
so you yeah. can see the real picture. Okay, so we're set on this. This could be what the data is. We don't know. Mm -hmm. Doesn't it seem to, to be that school two is in way better shape? Yeah. Okay. So explain which coach is correct. Try to use more than one statistic. So we're going to say something like the median of school two is higher. So that indicates, don't say indicates because they won't believe you did that. <laughs> indicates higher number of hours. And then Q1 and Q3 yeah they're just higher both are higher so that indicates that tells us that probably <clears throat> team 2 works out more because they have higher Q1 and higher Q3 then the mean we don't know but it looks like the mean of team two would be higher and the minimum and maximum of team two is higher. Mm -hmm. So then you would say this leads me to believe that team to has higher range upper value and lower right their lower value is higher than team one and their upper value higher median higher q1 higher q2 higher q3 so my guess is is that Coach 2 is correct. Oh, this is the maximum. Yeah, so still I, I stand by everything because... The maximum is uh, 3 and maximum for the sec second school is 14. Yeah, so you're going to just cross out everything except for range. Does not have a higher range or higher okay. uh, upper value. So everything except just has a higher range? Um, no, that's what you would cross off. Team 2 has a higher everything else except for range. Okay. All right. Um, and because we don't know the data, we don't know. Right? Yeah. You don't, okay. you have no idea how the data is spread, but just based on what they told us, it seems like that's the case.